Hi, I'm Steve Brown, and I'd like to introduce you to our RT160 Job Shop Package, our most popular rotary table system. Now, this could be called an indexer, could be called a rotary table, could be called a fourth axis. Unfortunately, there's no standard terminology that in a word or two de describes the capabilities of any one particular system. I'll get more into that later, but for the moment, let, let us let it suffice to say there are generally two different kinds of mechanical gearboxes available, and there are three different ways to control the servo motor that controls the movement of the uh, rotary axis. The entire ATS product line runs from a unit that's less than half the size of this that strictly has a 5C collet system to hold the workpiece up to rotary tables weighing way over a thousand pounds that have a 24 inch face plate and swing a 32 inch diameter. If you use vertical machining centers, perhaps you're already using rotary tables or indexers or whatever you call them, <coughs> perhaps not. If you're making rectangular parts like this that require machining on only a couple of surfaces, perhaps you've never even considered a rotary table. But in fact, rectangular parts like this where you mount them on a tombstone in multiples and you start machining multiple sides of multiple workpieces in one operation not only can you dramatically cut the cost of the manufactured part you can also improve the quality the accuracy of the part if you're making parts like this in this example it's a lathe part to start with but then we've got a mill a slot here We've got to plunge a tool down and rotate to cut this relief. Pull the tool out, rotate, plunge the tool, rotate to cut that relief. Same thing over here. If you're making a lot of parts like that, probably you're already using some kind of a rotary table system. Now if you profile parts like this, or turbine blades, or something else that requires you to move simultaneous in XYZ on your machining center and in rotary. Not only are you absolutely move it using a rotary table, you're using the third type of control, the most sophisticated kind of control. And we'll talk more about those various kinds of control. Most job shops never know what the next job is going to be and they want to be prepared to do as many different jobs as possible at the lowest possible price and the highest possible quality. We created the RT160 job shop package just for those kinds of shops. Because what's the one common issue with any machining application? Well, the one common issue is the work holding. How am I going to hold the blank so that I can machine the part? The job shop package consists of the RT160, which is a worm gear driven rotary table. There's a servo motor under here, drives a worm screw, 90 to 1 gear reduction, rotates the spindle. Inside of the spindle is a 2 inch bore. Inside of the 2 inch bore is a draw tube with a 1 and 3 quarter inch bore. The nose of the spindle has a standard A6 lathe taper, it makes it easy to mount chucks, face plates, any other work holding device. Built into the rear of the gearbox is a pneumatic spindle brake. So when the application requires me to rotate to position, I can then lock the spindle brake, do machining and uh, with, with the maximum in rigidity. Also built into the back of the uh, head gearbox is a pneumatic cylinder and piston that pushes and pulls the draw tube. Now in this two inch bore, the front has a taper that directly accepts a 3J collet. If I've got a, a, a workpiece I want to hold in a 3J collet, it's a simple matter to insert the collet, use this wrench in the back to engage the draw tube, rotate the wrench, screw the draw, draw tube onto the, uh, onto the collet, and then pneumatic power open close here actuates the collet and I can hold parts using standard 3J collets. If I have smaller work I can unscrew the 3J collet and I can equip this and this all comes with a package to handle a standard 5C collet. First of all I have to reduce the draw tube thread down to a thread that engages the 5C collet. 
So using the same wrench to rotate the draw tube, I use this special wrench here to hold the draw tube adapter. I insert that, rotate the draw tube onto the, this draw tube adapter. Then I, in, then I put in a, an adapter that necks the 3J taper down to a 5C taper. Okay. So I put that in the spindle, put in my 5C collet, again with my wrench I screw the draw tube onto the 5C collet and then I put the retainer on the front with four bolts and power collet closer 5C collet. Okay. Uh, if the neck job that comes along doesn't use a collet, I can remove 5C collet, 5C adapter, threaded draw tube adapter and directly onto my A6 spindle I can mount a four jaw chuck. Why a four jaw chuck? Well a four jaw chuck allows you to grip any rectangular workpiece or odd shape and adjust it anywhere on center line. I can then leave two jaws set, use the other two jaws for clamping if I've got a, a quantity of these parts to run. I have a simple fixture to put the, uh, the workpiece on center line. If a four jaw chuck doesn't work for you if your parts are more coming off of the lathe, we also have 80 inch three jaw self-centering chucks, manual chucks available that will bolt directly to the A6 spindle. If a collet or a chuck doesn't work for you, then we have a face plate that bolts directly to the A6 spindle nose. Put that on, gauge the four bolts, Bolt your workpiece directly to the face plate. If it's some kind of a prototype part, more than likely you bolt some kind of a fixture to the face plate that holds the workpiece. In addition to all of the front work holding devices, the system comes with a tail stock, dead center, hold down clamps to clamp your rotary table down to your table. Includes a lifting eye bolt to allow you to pick the unit up with a crane. And um, as I said, it really gives you a complete system to hold most any kind of workpiece that might come along across your vertical machining center that needs a fourth axis of orientation. The rotary table will swing 9.8 inches and with the servo motor it weighs 155 pounds. We also have twin head units available for jobs doing, or shops doing uh, higher production work. So whether you have a specific job in mind, or as the product name implies, you're a job shop and have no idea what might be coming down the pipe next week, the disk package gives you tremendous capability to handle most any kind of a job that might come along. In the beginning I said there are commonly two types of mechanical gearboxes and three systems to control the servo motor. Uh, this, is the, this is an example of the most common. It's a worm screw driven 90 to 1 gear reduction infinite positioning rotary table. So with the servo motor and the 91 gear reduction by controlling the servo motor I can index to any one of 360,000 positions or I can do slow rotary cuts. The other type of gearbox that, that, we can, that we sell but is not so commonly available uses the same mechanism as the turret on a lathe. It's a three-piece face gear coupling. These units have the ultimate in accuracy and rigidity but they're limited to only every 70 or to 72 positions or every five degrees of index. So if your workpiece can't, can't be accommodated by uh, every five degrees of index then you can't use that. But if you're doing something like tombstone work to, re to produce rectangular parts on tombstones indexing 90 degrees, you need super accuracy and super rigidity, then the face gear system is, is certainly uh, the best alternative. Now to the three options to control the servo motor. I'll first explain how each works, then I'll give you the advantages and disadvantages of them. The first two options will use a separate servo control system like our ATS AccuSmart 60 control. This servo control will totally control the motion of the motor, its speed, its final position, engage the brake, disengage the brake, etc. Option one requires that you enter the program for all the rotary moves, whether they're rapid to position or slow rotary feed rates, 
but to enter all the various moves to make the workpiece in sequence in, into the control using this keypad, or optionally you can use the RS-232 port to enter the, uh, enter the program. You only have to do that one time if you have a repeat job because you can store programs in the control. <clears throat> As, the, as you're machining the part, as the rotary move is required by the uh, machining uh, process, the CNC machine will send a command, an M code, to this control. This control then will execute that move, again, whether it's a rapid position or a slow rotary feed rate. When that move is complete, the AccuSmart then sends a signal back to the CNC saying that the, uh, say, say, saying that the, uh, uh, the move is completed. In the second option, we also use the AccuSmart control, uh, but the control can actually be positioned behind the machine. You never have to touch it except each morning you'll have to come in and, and, and turn on the power. In this case, we do all of the programming for the X, Y, Z, and rotary moves in the standard three-axis CNC control. When a rotary move is required by the machining process, the CNC machine sends the command that you programmed to the AccuSmart control via an RS-232 line. So each time you need a rotary move, that complete command the speed of rotation, the, the final position you want to achieve is sent VRS-232 to the AccuSmart. The AccuSmart executes that move, sends back the completion signal, and the XYZ machining then proceeds. <clears throat> the third option is to purchase a CNC machine with a four-axis CNC control. So the one CNC control controls the XYZ and the rotary move. So that's the three different options. Each of the three rotary control options has advantages and disadvantages. The first option using the M code has an advantage that is very easy to retrofit to any existing machine, CNC machine, old NC machine, provided you have an M code available. Second advantage is the system is portable from one machine to another. So in your shop, if you have 10 machines and you want to have three different rotary tables, small ones, big ones, uh, you can move any rotary table to any machine. All you need is that M code. I, and I can do rapid positioning. I can make slow rotary cuts. Okay. A disadvantage is that I cannot do simultaneous rotary and XYZ moves. So if I need to profile the propeller blade where I have to do rotary plus XYZ simultaneous, the M code system isn't going to do it. The second option, use, using the RS-232, has the advantage that there is no shop floor programming. All my programming is done in the three-axis CNC machine, stored in the machine once it's, it becomes part of the part program. And anytime you run that job, the program, when you put it in your, in your CNC machine, will run the XYZ and all of the rotary moves. Like the M code, it has the advantage of being portable from machine to machine. So any machine in the shop that either has the RS-232 capability or an M code, you can use your rotary system. Um, as with the M code, a disadvantage that while I'm doing, while I can do rapid positioning moves, I can do rotary cutting, I cannot do simultaneous rotary and XYZ moves. So, uh, if I have to do something like that propeller blade, then neither M code nor RS-232 is going to give you a satisfactory um, uh, operation. The third option is the full four-axis CNC control. Uh, as with RS-232, it has the advantage of no shop floor, shop floor programming required. All the program for XYZ and rotary is stored in the three-axis CNC. Uh, big advantage if you have to do something like a propeller blade or a tapered screw or anything where you need simultaneous rotary and XYZ moves, then the full four-axis CNC control is the, is the, is the required uh, system for you. Disadvantage of a full four axis, well one, the system will not be portable from one machine to another. A uh, full four axis system, the motor, the interface, the cabling is all for a certain machine. 
unless you had an absolutely identical machine with exactly the same control, servo drives, etc., that rotary table is going to be dedicated to that one particular machine. Another disadvantage, very, very difficult to retrofit. Generally, a full four axis is going to be purchased when you buy the new machine tool. Retrofits are possible depending on the machine you have and how old it is, but, uh, but for the most part, full four axis controls are purchased at the time the new machine is purchased. Uh, the other disadvantage would be the price. The cost of a, a system with M code or RS-232 is quite affordable. Full four axis, depending on the machine tool brand that you're purchasing, uh, could be uh, probably double the price of an M code or RS-232. Although there are a few uh, machine tool builders that offer full four axis for, uh, for uh, uh, a price that's not all that much more than the RS-232. So what's the bottom line? What's the best option of the three control system to make your parts on your machines in your shop? <clears throat> well, if you're going to have to do some contouring, simultaneous rotary and XYZ moves like that propeller blade or tapered screws or cams, then a full four axis CNC control is really your only option to do it properly. On the other hand, if you're not looking to make simultaneous rotary and XYZ moves, no matter how complicated your workpiece, and you're looking to retrofit it on an existing machine, then I suggest you take a hard look at the ATS AccuSmart control and the RS-232 uh, option. We can do RS-232 on most any CNC machine that's been built since 1988. They have that RS-232 communication capability. Um, taking the RS-232 one step further, if you're really doing something like that, like that propeller blade, you probably really need a two-axis, a tilting rotary table. Uh, tilting rotary tables have a rotary motion here, and they can also tilt in this axis. So really, on a three-axis CNC machine with a tilting rotary table, you have five axes of motion. If you're doing something like the propeller blade, then you really need to buy a machine with a full five-axis CNC control. That's the only way you can simultaneous do rotary, XYZ, maybe rotary and tilt. However, if you just need five axis of positioning, or maybe to do some contouring, but contouring that doesn't require me to move simultaneous in a rotary move at XYZ, a tilting rotary table with two AccuSmarts communicating with any standard uh, three-axis CNC control allows you to, to program and store the entire XYZ tilt and rotary in the CNC control and do those parts on uh, perhaps one of your existing machines. And the price for a tilting rotary table and the two AccuSmarts control is probably only 10% of the cost if you had to go out and buy a full five, a new five-axis CNC machine with a similar tilting rotary table system. Uh, but of course, if you're going to do propeller blades or something like that, the AccuSmart option is, is not going to get the job done for you. So I hope this has um, been informative. I encourage you to um, send us an email or give us a call. Uh, perhaps uh, you'd even like to have us arrange to have one of our field, service, or field uh, uh, sales managers visit you in your shop. We are with one of the few companies that uh, we make house calls. We are eager to get into your shop, look at your applications, look at your machines, make a recommendation uh, to exactly what is the right system what size of rotary table or tilting rotary table, what type of, of control package is best for you. <clears throat> and um, if you do buy, we are able to do the installations anywhere in North America, and we're there to do the service uh, should there ever be an issue following the installation.